Well, Phil Burgess, it's your final official day at Telstra and this is your final official interview. Uh, quite fitting to have it on Now We're Talking. Absolutely, and this is uh, Now We Are Talking is one of the things I'm most proud of. I just, um, you know, the idea that we could have an alternative website, be the first company in the country to have that, and to see it so widely used. I think we're, we're getting, what, 50,000 hits uh, every couple of weeks yeah. now? That's, that's um, we still have a long way to go to catch up with Crikey, uh, but uh, we ought to have our goals set high, and we ought to, the thing I'm happiest about uh, Jeremy is the way it's been changing. I mean, we had a, an original idea when we started, but you and others, um, Andrew Maiden and others that have been in leadership positions, uh, 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 Rosie Mullaly and others, have have really uh, innovated and changed and, and renewed and, and experimented and, and really made it what it is today, and that's fantastic. That's the way it should be. So on today, what, what are your reflections? What's the, what's the magic moment in your years here at Telstra? Well, I think the, the magic moment here was the October the 6th in 2006 when we opened the NextG network. But there have been a lot of other ones. I mean, I was really proud this year that we were able to get the government for the first time in three years to give us the safeguards we needed to deploy ADSL 2 Plus to 2.4 million homes. We've been trying to do that for several years and we finally got it done this year. I was really, I was proud as punch the day that uh, the government uh, rescinded the $1 billion giveaway of taxpayers' money to Optus elders to the Opal people to you know build a competing network with uh, taxpayer money in this country that just would have been a waste of money it would have been an affront to every shareholder in Telstra we built the next G network with shareholder money not government money uh, and they gave money to a, essentially to a foreign dominated cons consortium um, so so uh, to, to see that reverse was a tremendous um, uh, sense of uh, satisfaction and achievement because we really worked hard to uh, get grassroots support for uh, turning that back and and I think that that is just tremendous and then we were able to shut down the CDMA network that was a, a huge advantage for us and for the people of Australia because we can now put all of our resources into making the next G network even better it's already the world's largest fastest most advanced uh, mobile internet and now it's going to be even better. There's been a, a lot of talk about the Phil Burgess style uh, changing Telstra in its public persona. Um, do you think that your legacy will continue on, that Telstra will continue to be uh, some say aggressive but uh, some say uh, just forthright in making sure its views are expressed? You mean the, the Phil Burgess uh, warm, fuzzy, <laughs> uh, low-key style? That's the one, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, no, look, um, uh, I am what I am, and and uh, my style is what it is. It's always been that way in everything I've ever done. I've always been outspoken. I've always tried to tell the truth. I've always tried to uh, tell it like it is. Uh, but also, you know, the, the substance of what I've said is really what's important, and the substance has always reflected the views of, of Saul and the senior management team and, and of the board, and, and that's what I've tried to do. I mean, my job is not to be a freelancer. My job is to be, is to reflect the views of our top leadership, and I think that one of the things that's been most gratifying to me in these last two or three weeks is people have really been uh, complimentary to me in private and uh, in fact I told Saul if people had been as nice to me the last um, six months as they have been the last few weeks I wouldn't have left <laughs> but no people have been very complimentary but one of the compliments I get that I cherish the most is people say you know you have really uh, carried the water for Saul you've really carried the water for the board you've really uh, helped the public to under you and the people in communications have really helped the public to understand what our um, what our corporate policies are and and that that's gratifying to me because I wasn't out there on my own I was out there with uh, with uh, marching orders with um, uh, with with a point of view that had been approved by the board that had been a, that had been advanced by our senior management team and so uh, I feel really good about that that's what a communications group should do and we didn't lie we never lied we always told the truth uh, sometimes we we didn't tell the whole truth because you, because for legal reasons you can't tell everything but we we seldom said no comment you have to really go far and wide to find a no comment in the last three years because my view is if people 
are interested in something about a large publicly held corporation with 1.4 million shareholders, we have an obligation to tell if we can. If there's some legal or financial or competitive reason, then of course we can't. But uh, we've been very forthright and I think that's helped us in our credibility with consumers and with the public. People talk about, and we and we hear written about the transformation of Telstra, the the next G, the IT transformation. Um, I guess people outside of Telstra don't get to see the pers personal sort of attitudinal transformation that's happened yeah. in the company. As someone who's come new to Telstra post Phil Burgess, um, people talk about the the old days of, of when we didn't say anything and that sort of thing. Is your legacy that that, that attitude is sort of gone? The old Telstra is sort of gone, and there will be this new forthright. Uh, view continuing on? Yeah, I hope so. I think that um, uh, what what happened when, when we came here, I think, is that, you know, I thought a lot of people would have to be replaced because of uh, the attitudes and practices that had that that I saw, but I mean, what we really did was unleash people. I mean, what we found was that when people were unleashed, when they were allowed to uh, practice their profession uh, the way they were taught and the way they thought was right, that they everybody rose to the occasion. I mean, we didn't have to get rid of people. I mean, people just uh, rose to the challenge uh, almost literally overnight. I mean, within the first month, and. Um, <clears throat> That was one of the most uh, gratifying things for me. The other thing is going forward, I mean, we have a great leader in David Quilty. One of the most uh, uh, gratifying things to me on the transition has been to see the way David has stepped up aggressively, you know, both internally and externally. Internally, he's taken the bull by the horns and, and really um, got people organized around Saul's and the senior team's uh, agenda for the coming year, which is a big agenda, FTTN and other national broadband network and, and uh, other issues. Uh, and externally, he's become very visible quickly. I think that's very important. It's important for people to know uh, that that uh, there is a, a, a really strong person uh, that's moved into my position and I think David has really established himself quickly in the eyes of the press and the public as somebody who uh, will speak out uh, for Telstra shareholders. Now of course uh, being on the World Wide Web you're not ever far away from now we're talking. We hope that you will contribute any articles and to our discussion forums. Yeah, could I be a blogger? I can't see why not. Yeah, maybe maybe I should do that. I um, I thought about that the other day when I I was reading a, a blog of another uh, company where a guy had left and become a blogger, and I thought, gee, maybe I could do that. Well, you and Rod would then be in competition to see who could be the most uh, controversial and and in the hits. Uh, if it's if it's Rod, uh, we we would collude before we, <laughs> could, we, 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 we before we would compete. I think. I think in the end, people customers, consumers in general, the public, even other media, they uh, value authentic people who say what they think and, and do what they say. And I think that's the kind of culture we're developing in Telstra. You know, we've got a tremendous record of achievement that we do what we say, we deliver on time, we deliver under budget. You know, we, we if things aren't right, we fix it. We, um, uh, we just make things happen and that's what in the end people are going to reward, I think. So, this is not goodbye, this is see you later mate. Okay. And thank you very much for having us on your last interview. Well, um, thank you, uh, Jeremy, and, I, and you know, I want to thank everybody, you know, the, the, it's the, when I, when I was a young guy, I went to uh, Norway as a Fulbright Scholar, and when I came back, uh, I came into New York Harbor and the Statue of Liberty was there, and I thought, and, and I thought very quickly about America and, and, and got chills down my back and all that but then I started reflecting because it takes a long time to go up New the Hudson River to to the dock and I about 45 minutes I started thinking you know what's really important about coming to New York Harbor is the huge privilege I've had to live in Norway it was a huge privilege and I and I've never forgotten that and I and I think about that here that there's no greater privilege than to be a guest in another country and 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 that privilege is amplified a hundred times when you can have the privilege, the additional privilege of working for one of its iconic companies in a leadership position. And and that's the privilege I've had and it's one I'll never forget and it's one for which I'll be forever grateful.